Each, each of us is equal before the law. No one, no one is above the law, not even the President of the United States. So that was President Biden last night speaking to the American public in response to the Supreme Court ruling on presidential immunity. So right after that, New York Congresswoman Democrat Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez taking things a step further, vowing to file articles of impeachment against the Supreme Court justices who took part in that monumental decision. We'll discuss that with Wendy Patrick. She's a prosecutor and legal and political commentator. Michael Gottlieb, criminal defense attorney, joining us. And Doug Burns, former federal prosecutor. Thank you all three for being on. Wendy, we'll start with you. But before we get to AOC um, and what she is vowing here with articles of impeachment with the Supreme Court justices, uh, we have breaking news. The Manhattan District Attorney's Office just releasing an official letter uh, to the judge in Trump's New York criminal case stating that this Although we believe defendants' arguments to be without merit, we do not oppose his request for leave to file and his uh, putative request to adjourn sentencing pending determination of his motion. Again, this has to do with the Supreme Court ruling yesterday on presidential immunity, uh, doing things in an official act versus an unofficial act, being prosecuted, therefore. Um, with this now, the DA is not opposed to allowing the motion to go through, um, though believes that there is, this is going through without merit. But bottom line, Wendy, what does this mean uh, from a legal standpoint for Trump and his New York criminal case? Well, what it means is the DA there is probably going to go through the same analysis as the prosecutors on all the rest of his cases. They're going to look to see if he, they're, like you said, core official acts, absolute immunity, of course, uh, would protect those. But remember that that decision by the Supreme Court went farther. It talked about presumptive immunity for a much more expansive list of acts. Now, they're taking it back to Judge Chutkin in the particular case that was analyzed to go through that analysis, but that's also going to apply to what he's charged with on the other cases. So you better believe that they are roundtabling and brainstorming what this is going to mean. They're going to look at what he did when to see if there's any argument that those actions were closed with some kind of immunity. And it's a good thing for both sides that they're going to have a delay, so they'll both be prepared to battle it out at the new sentencing hearing, which is going to be set. Yeah. I was even thinking, Doug, you know, when when Trump was uh, calling Raffensperger in Georgia, he was the president of the United States. Uh, it was in that period between the presidential the transition from from Trump to Biden uh, with this immunity case impact his Georgia elections case. No, there's a lot to sort out in terms of categorizing what's official uh, and what's private conduct. Um, you know, those political sound bites are very troubling. You know, sorry to be a broken record. But again, to say that, you know, they've made everything. I mean, that's just not what took place. Certain things are immune, certain aren't. And it needs to be sorted through. As far as the sentencing, I think it's a good thing, first of all, just politically. So it's not right before the convention. I didn't think that made a lot of sense on any level from any standpoint. <clears throat> and then on the merits of it, it's actually interesting because you need the chronology. Was he president? Was he not president? You know, when various acts were done. And then another one's a little in the weeds, and that is <clears throat> Trump's claim is that they put into evidence things that may have been immune. I'm not so sure that's the same as, you know, you went after me for things that are immune. Yeah, good point. Uh, <laughs> Michael, your thoughts here as, as well, again, on this, this motion. It, it, when this sentencing is potentially delayed in the New York criminal case with the 34 felonies for falsifying business records for Trump. Uh, if sentencing is delayed, and that's what it look, looks like, is that somewhat of a win for Trump's legal team? I don't see it as a win. Um, they would have to seek a new trial based on the Supreme Court ruling claiming that Trump is immune. If the judge doesn't grant that, it's not a win and Trump still gets sentenced. And I agree with counsel that, you know, both sides have the opportunity here to understand and determine whether or not there is any impact from this decision on this case. Was Trump president at the time that he was prosecuted for these 34 acts? And were they official acts? I, I don't see it as having an impact in the New York matter. Okay, but still could be delayed, right? We're waiting to hear from Judge Mershon how he reacts to this letter from the district attorney, the letter from the Trump's attorneys. Um, and I guess before we let you go, Wendy, since we started this segment talking about potential impeachment of SCOTUS justices, does Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's plan actually have any chance at success? 
<laughs> no, it, you know, it's it's one of those arguments that uh, is often made in, in the heat of the moment when emotions are running high. Um, there's really very, very few mechanisms available to rein in the U.S. Supreme Court, which is one of the reasons why the court packing argument comes up every couple of years when we have these blockbuster decisions uh, that are very divisive. But, you know, it just sort of draws more attention to the reality um, that these are very touchy decisions. You have to really read them and understand that it didn't go as far as a lot of people think. It didn't rule the presidents are immune from anything they do in office. Instead, it provides a balancing test. And I think when emotions calm down, so will the rhetoric. All right. Uh, great discussion, legal panel. Thanks for adjusting on the fly. Wendy Patrick, Michael Gottlieb, and Doug Burns, thanks so much. My pleasure. Thanks. Yeah.